Hi, this video is all about uh, reloading a 338 Lapua. Now I have a bunch of empty brass here and what I hope to show in this video is all the important steps to reload uh, the 338 Lapua. As you know it's a very high precision round meant to shoot long distances and the only way to get a good result at a long distance is to be super super careful on all the steps. Uh, the cases have to be prepared perfectly, the powder has to be measured uh, as precisely as can be measured, everything has to be done to a super high level of accuracy. Even after reloading for about 20 years, this is taking it to the next level to get a great result. You start out with some dirty brass, and if you can see the uh, discoloration around the neck, uh, you want to get all that clean. So the first thing we do is we throw that thing in a tumbler. Close it down, and we're going to tumble it for at least six hours. After six hours, uh, we're going to take a look at it, and then you have two choices. If the neck is clean, uh, you're fine. You can tumble it again. If it's not clean, or you can get a scotch pad like this and mechanically polish it. So here we go. Okay, it's now the next morning. Um, we polished these things. They're now bright and shiny. Probably went more like seven or eight hours. You can see it's nice and clean. So now we have to separate these things out, clean them out. One of the problems is you get a lot of the media caught inside there. You got to make sure that's out or it makes a real mess later on. Okay, now I'm going to deep prime the case. The case has been cleaned. I'm going to roll it in some lubricant, pick it up, dip it in talcum powder to lubricate the inside of the neck, place it in the sizing decapping die, <clears throat> pull it out, give it a basic cleaning, get the lubricant off that I just put on. Because I'll have to be washing it to clean it later, but for now, that's one decapped casing. Okay, now that we've got all the cases uh, deprimed and necked down, we still have this lubricant on there that we got to wash off. So I've got about 60 of them in here, and I'm pouring it into a container. I've got some hot water running and the first thing I'm going to do is spray some all-purpose degreaser in here fill this thing up with hot water and try to wash off all that lubricant I throw in this little scrub pad, see if that'll help get it get it away because that uh, the degreaser doesn't really cut all the lubricant off. It's got to be somewhat mechanically put some uh, grease cutting liquid detergent in here, along with some more hot water. Shake it up again. Feels like you got most of the lubricant off, but it's still not as clean as I'd like it to be. So I'm just going to continue to rinse this in hot water. I'm going to throw this towel on the floor and spread everything there and wipe it down a little bit. I'll go through and probably wipe all these off by hand because it doesn't feel like all the lubricants off yet and it has to be mostly gone before the next phase. And I'll come back to the next part in a few minutes. 
Okay, I've wiped down the cases as much as I can, got most of the lubricant off, and they're fairly dry on the outside, but you can blow into it and there's still water on the inside. So I've got this in this little oven tray, and what I'm going to do is stick it in my little oven, set it at 250 degrees. And the reason I picked 250 is that's high enough to bake off the water, but not so high it's going to affect the heat treat of the cases. So I'm going to bake it in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes, make sure all the water's gone before I go on to the next step because you can imagine water does not mix well with primers or gunpowder. And of course after they come out of the oven they're going to have to have a cool down period because you can't size an elongated case that's uh, too hot to hold and too hot to handle. Okay, now that we've got all the cases uh, sized, deprimed, um, we got to cut them to length and washed and dried, of course. So uh, we're trying to get it to a length of 2.714. I don't know if you can see it, but the case length has to be 2.714. And the way we do this is mount it in this little holder, tap it in, mount it in this fixture which is set to 2.714 grind off a fair amount of metal I don't know if you can see all the chips in here that's the cutter and then we knock it out of the holder take this chamfering tool chamfer the outside of it get the burr off chamfer the inside and that one's done and now we do it again another 59 times when you remove a lot of material this end stays pretty square and so now the chamfer relieves that sharp edge and something we have to check later is that primer pocket to make sure that's not too dirty okay the final step in this is to check the primer pocket now this is a primer clean out tool and it comes with a large and a small size and of course for this you use the large pocket you look in there and you can maybe see a little carbon build up in there and the hole, of course the hole has to be clear. You just run that through there and I don't know if you can see but it's a little cleaner than it used to be. Okay this is the brand new RCBS priming tool. The primer uh, is fed into there. So you lift this up, put some primer in there See, there's no primer. Put it in there. Press down. Nice and flush. And it's off to the races. Okay, what we're going to do is start filling the cases now. We've got them primed. And we will start out by dropping powder in this, in the scale and we're looking for exactly 84 grains. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but it's a little bit low, so I'll use this trickle device to just trickle a grain or two at a time in there until the line exactly lines up with zero. And I take the powder, put it in the case, and then set that aside. Get this ready for the next time. Do another powder dump. Now sometimes these powder dumps go a little bit heavy, a little bit light. Sometimes you have to take a few grains out of the measure. Sometimes you got to add a few more. Here I'm just trickling in a couple of grains at a time trying to get it to exactly the right weight and it's kind of important to look at this line the same direction all the time so you don't get uh, parallax reading 
looking at it one time in one direction or another time in another direction. Now a little trick to make sure you have consistency is to take a flashlight, look down in there, and make sure they all look about the same to make sure you haven't missed any and to make sure that they're all perfectly level. Okay, now we're in the final stages. We're going to take the cases that we just filled in a bullet. Now my press doesn't have quite a deep enough throat, so you got to kind of feed it up in the die and seat it all the way down. I'm looking for a length of 3.650. And if I did this right, it's exactly 3.650. So that's a done case. Do one more. Got to handle this carefully since the powder is already measured. Check the length one more time. 3.650. I'm about three thousandths under. So you have to check several of them to make sure that you're averaging your target length. And there we have a completed 338 Lapua round ready to go. Okay, here's some close-up pictures of some of the equipment. First of all, you need the 338 Lapua die set. This is a two die set. This is for decapping and sizing. And this is for seating the bullet. Of course, you need a shell holder and a press that works with that. Okay. Over here, we've got a dedicated powder measure. Um, this is the kind of thing, once it's set, I want to leave it. We've got a scale over here. It reads to the tenth of a grain. You drop a load of powder. Take the trickler here, turn this, and you can see small amounts of powder falling out. Use a little scoop to, if it's a little heavy, you take out two or three grains. If it's a little light, you add a couple grains, and that does that. Um, over here, we've got a brand new RCBS uh, primer tool, and I bought another shell holder so I wouldn't have to be swapping it out back and forth there. But this is the kind of thing you need to properly seat the primers. The Federal 215 primers are kind of hard to seat. And I should have been able to do it on this press, but uh, there just wasn't a mecha enough mechanical advantage to do that. And then, of course, you got some shell holders, uh, trays to hold it, and these are oversized for the 338 Lapua. And that's a pretty good rundown. Oh, of course, a uh, good dial indicator to measure the case. And... The only thing I don't have is a case trimmer, which uh, you saw earlier in the video, um, to measure the this used to measure the case and to measure the overall bullet length when you're done. So that's a pretty comprehensive list of the equipment needed to do this reloading.